In example two, we have the results from a survey, 628 employees, stating that only 32% will give civil rights leaders birthday, um, sorry, will give the civil rights leaders birthday as a paid holiday to all or most of their workers. Um, I left out a piece of information there. This should be a survey about uh, people getting Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday off from work. Can we conclude that less than half of all employers will give their workers paid time off for Dr. King's birthday? So in this case, the claim is that P is less than 0 0.5, so that the population proportion is less than 50%, leading us to the following hypotheses. So our null hypothesis would be that P is equal to 0 0.5. And our alternative hypothesis would be that P is less than 0 0.5. Let me change that. P less than 0 0.5. So if we're claiming that less than half of employers, so P should be less than 50%, generates our null and alternative hypotheses for us, which you can again work through more in stages by constructing the claim negation and identifying those two statements. We have in this case 628 times 0 0.32, which is approximately 201 successes, and 628 times 1 minus 0 0.32, which gives us approximately 427 failures. So the conditions are met to test a claim about a proportion. So we have our hypotheses, we've verified our conditions, so now we can look at generating our p-value by conducting the test. So in StatCrunch, we can again select Stat, <coughs> Proportion Stats, One Sample with Summary. In this case, we have 201 successes out of our 628 observations. Our null hypothesis is that p is equal to 50%. The alternative is that it's less. So click Compute. And we get this p-value of less than 0 0.0001. So what that means is that p-value is just very, very, very small, smaller than this value of 0 0.0001, but StatCrunch just rounds that off with this notation. So in this case, the p-value is less than 0 0.0001, which means it's less than 0 0.03, which equals alpha. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that P is less than 0 0.5. So that's our sort of mathematical statement, symbolic statement about rejecting the null hypothesis and what that means. So now what we want is a statement in the context of the data. So we're saying there is sufficient data or sufficient evidence to conclude that less than half, less than half of employers will give people time off for Dr. King's birthday. Meaning that in this case, the claim is supported. In example three, of information that 260 firefighters died while on duty from 2009 to 2011. Of these, 154 were volunteer firefighters. Can we conclude the majority of firefighters who die while on duty are volunteer firefighters? And we're going to use a significance level of 0.01. So in this case, the claim is that P is greater than 0 0.5. So we're claiming the majority of firefighters who die are volunteer firefighters leading us to the following hypotheses. Oh, sorry. H, H naught, or our null hypothesis, that P is equal to 0 0.5. And our alternative hypothesis, that P is greater than 0 0.5. 
we have 154 successes. So that being the 154 volunteer firefighters who died. And 260 minus 154 gives us 106 failures. So the conditions are met to test a claim about a proportion. So using options and edit, we can come back to this one sample proportion summary screen and just update our information. So we had 154 successes out of our 260 observations. Our hypotheses are changing. So now our alternative hypothesis is greater than 50% for the majority. We click compute and we get a p-value of 0.0015. So we could say the p-value, 0.0015, which is less than 0.01, which equals our significance level of alpha. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that p is greater than 0.5. So our symbolic statement and then our contextual statement there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the majority of firefighters who die while on duty are volunteers. And again, in this case, the claim is supported since that conclusion matches what the original claim was asking us. In example four, Heartland began tracking a cohort of students in 2006. In 2009, they reported 68.9% were making successful progress. Can we claim the majority of students who enroll at Heartland will make successful progress? So again, the claim in this case is that P is greater than 0 0.5, so we're claiming the majority of students will make, um, will make successful progress. leading us to these hypotheses. In this case, P is equal to 0 0.5. And our alternative is that P is greater than 0 0.5. We have 549 times 0 0.689 gives us approximately 378 successes and 549 times 1 minus 0 0.689 gives us approximately 171 failures. So the conditions are met to test a claim about proportions. And see if I can just give myself a little more room there. So we can flip back over to StatCrunch. In this case, we said we have 378 successes, 171 failures, or I'm sorry, 171, we had 171 failures, but we had 549 observations, which is what we want. We have our same null and alternative hypotheses for this problem. So we click compute and again get that p-value of less than 0 0.0001, so that very small p-value. So the p-value is less than 0 0.0001, which is less than our value for alpha, which in this case is 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that P must be greater than 0 0.5. So in the context of the data, we're saying there's sufficient evidence to conclude that the majority of Heartland students will make successful progress. And again, our claim is supported. So in each of these examples, we've ended up rejecting the null hypothesis, 
keep in mind that's not always the case. When we looked at example one, we demonstrated a case where we failed to reject and what that conclusion looked like.